imagine for a minute that there is a bomb scare which poses an existential threat to the safety and security of everyone in the city in which you live. Nobody knows where the bomb is, how large it is, or how to defuse it, just that it exists and that there is no escaping it. Only the top few security officials know of this threat, but they're not keen to make the news public because they're scared it'll create panic. They decide to issue a red alert so that people exercise caution and can report any suspicious objects or activities. It's just the same with climate change. Many people have received a red alert. They know that something dangerous is out there. But what many don't realize is the scale and the intensity of the threat. Climate change certainly poses a threat to the future of our existence. However, how can people work to eliminate the threat if they don't comprehend the magnanimity of the threat? The biggest challenge that we face is not climate change. It's the fact that there's a fundamental problem with the way in which we perceive climate change. The need of the R is not for people to know about the problem. It's for them to understand the problem and to know how to act on it. Hello, everyone. My name is Abhir, and I've worked actively as a youth environmentalist for the past eight years. I've always believed that in order to pay attention to a speaker, you need to feel like you get to know them a bit. So I'm going to take a minute out to introduce myself because I don't want you sleeping off in my very first TEDx talk, especially considering that I've heard most people find climate change to be a boring subject. And honestly, I mean, you know, I, I don't blame you because when I was in middle school, I used to attend environmental awareness classes on a bi-weekly basis. And more often than not, I would find myself absentmindedly scribbling, doodling, and scarcely paying attention. Today, I've completed eight years as a youth environmentalist and have worked prominently uh, with organizations in India and abroad. What changed? Well, amusing as it is to hear a 19-year-old say this, it's not been an easy journey. If anything, my age is responsible for making the path traversed even more difficult. My journey began in middle school when I joined the Environmental Initiatives Club in school. Having personally been impacted every year between October to January, for many years due to the poor air quality levels in Delhi, the fight against air pollution became personal for me. I was soon elected to the student council to lead environmental initiatives in my school. And I've worked with several organizations such as the Center for Science and Environment, WWF, and the Delhi Metro. In 2018, I worked alongside the UN in India to plan and carry out the events for World Environment Day, uh, which India was hosting that year. And my key work has been around air pollution and waste segregation, but I was also facilitated by the National Tiger Conservation Authority of India for being a friend of the tiger. One of my key and most noteworthy projects was Swat Chetna, where I single-handedly brought together private, public, and NGO schools and we signed an MOU with the Delhi Metro, where I brought together over 500 volunteers to conduct plantation cleanliness and awareness drives. Currently, I'm leading a team of 35 volunteers at Care for Air, an NGO working to combat air pollution in India. And I'm also the president of the Executive Council at Youth Connect, a youth empowerment NGO based in England. Most recently, I was one amongst five international youth environmentalists from around the world who represented India and extensively engaged with the Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Antonio Guterres, and Sir David Attenborough on BBC World News and BBC World Service. The BBC honored me by identifying me as amongst the foremost youth environmentalists internationally. I am also currently producing a podcast called Candid Climate Conversations for an England-based think tank called the Ramphal Institute. Well, I hope that's helped you get to know me a little better. That's me. And if you've not gathered in so far, I will be talking about the flaws in our perception of climate change and the role of the youth in overcoming them. Most of the people I'm privileged to know have heard of climate change. And I often find myself asking them, just like I'm asking you right now, uh, take five seconds and think about what climate change means to you. More often than not, 
the most frequent response that I get has to do with terms like global warming, melting glaciers, rising sea levels, or even names like Al Gore and Greta Thunberg. What else though? Most people knowledge, the, the limit, the, the knowledge of most people of climate change is limited to this. And I can't blame them because these are the normative terms and the phrases which are most commonly associated, uh, particularly in the mainstream discourse around climate change. But therein lies the problem. Think about it. We hear buzzwords like virtual reality and artificial intelligence. But how much does the average person really know about them? I believe that climate change and global warming are terms that students study about and hear of in schools. They've very literally been reduced to textbook definitions. And there's a challenge that then arises when something becomes a buzzword or when it becomes a textbook definition. There's a certain disassociation, a distance that is created between the word and the user of the words. AI and VR are certainly looked upon as something which have a wow factor. But, you know, by virtue of that, they're also considered to be something that only specialists can truly understand in entirety. Similarly, climate change has also become a buzzword. But people have also started to believe that there's not much they can do about it. In fact, most people I talk with believe that there is nothing that they can do about climate change. They believe that the only solution to climate change can be found when governments and corporates decide to work towards one dedicated. And frankly, that's, that's utter nonsense. That's complete nonsense the way I look at it because it's shocking for someone such as myself who's devoted eight years of his youth life to building awareness and to finding solutions to the climate crisis that people believe that there is nothing that they can do. I would argue that individual action is the most important and it's the most impactful. I'm gonna take a second here to share the story. Recently, following my appearance on the BBC, one of India's most prominent newspapers, um, which I won't name, reached out to me. They, they wanted me to write a piece for them on the immediate solutions to climate change that individuals could take up. I was, of course, most happy to oblige, and I sent them my piece. But a few days later, the editor reached out to me, and he's like, you know, uh, could you revise it? Because... He thought that the solutions that I had proposed were too elementary. And they said that they expected much more concrete and definitive solutions from a seasoned climate change advocate. Well, let me tell you what some of these solutions were. In that article, I had drawn a comparison. You know, as Indians, many of us at one point in time used to emulate Europe. In fact, some of us continue to do so. And if you notice something about Europe, people over there choose to walk down to the neighborhood markets, especially if it's in a three or four block radius, you know. In India, on the other hand, anyone who has a motor vehicle, whether it's a bike, whether it's a car, they choose to drive down to the neighborhood market. But why can't we walk down to our neighborhood market too? Why can't we take a cycle? You know, similarly, I'd suggested measures such as composting, switching to electric vehicles for the people who could afford them at least. And the reason that I'm sharing this story is because I'm sure that most of you would agree with me when I say that a lot of these very simple measures are not followed by most people even today. And I was forced to tell the editor that I would not change my suggestions because there's no point of my suggesting complex, nuanced, enviro-scientific solutions when the simple, basic ones aren't being applied. And that's what's really important. It's exactly this, you know, changing the narrative, shifting the discourse, overcoming the increasing disassociation from climate change and making people aware of their role in addressing the climate crisis, not just presently, but also in the time to come. While I'm on the subject of time, you know, it's, it's interesting to think of the role that time has to play with regard to climate change. Now, you might call this a drastic comparison, but I've noticed that when there's a terrorist attack or a natural calamity, an event which has immediate consequences, there's also an immediate response. 
civil society, governments, and the media jump into action immediately. Why then is it not the same for climate change? Well, climate change results in the deaths of millions of people every year, and that number only seems to be rising year after year. The answer to that question then has to do with time. Human beings concern themselves with what they can comprehend and what they can imagine. We don't see or feel the consequences of climate change in the way we witness or experience those of a natural disaster. Action on climate change from any stakeholder is generally not decisive, it's not urgent because of the fact that the consequences aren't immediate. Climate change is affecting our lives slowly and steadily without us knowing. And with each day that goes by, we inch closer and closer to a point of no return. What then is the solution? The solution is simple. It's to empower and to support the youth and to amplify their voices and to allow them to be heard. The reality is that the vast majority of policymakers who sit in parliaments around the world today are not likely to remain in parliament 20 years from now. Although we are already feeling the effects of climate change, the more devastating ones will be felt in just a few decades from now. My generation has been handed down a planet which has been exploited for its resources mercilessly. It's my generation and generations after mine which will have to face the impacts of the crimes of generations before us. It's then only fair that we have a say in shaping the policies that will shape our tomorrow. As an active youth environmentalist for the past eight years, there have been countless instances where I faced hurdles only because of how young I was. While it's true that older people have the upper edge in terms of lived experiences, it's certainly not fair for younger people or their ideas to be dismissed just on the basis of their age. If you think about it, now or in history, a lot of the ideas of social reform have emerged from students, which, if you think about it, explains the influence and the importance of students' unions at universities around the world today. Human beings are inherently averse to change and will only adapt to change slowly and steadily over time. This probably then explains why older generations tend to dismiss the ideas of the younger ones. They are afraid of change. That is exactly why the solution to climate change is intrinsically dependent on the youth. Most young people aren't afraid to speak their minds. They certainly aren't tied down by political ideologies. They don't have organizational obligations which can prevent them from sharing their bold revolutionary ideas. For many countries around the world, climate change isn't even an election issue till now which is to say that it's not in included in their party election manifestos. Take India for an example. You know, it wasn't until 2019, the general election which happened, that, you know, we saw the words climate change appeared in the manifestos of the two largest parties in India, the Congress and the BJP. 2019, we've known about climate change for over 20 years, for much longer than that. And it's, it's young people then who are responsible for primarily advocating for issues of climate change. They're already doing it, but it's also us who are responsible for making climate change an election. Because the reality is that most politicians will not care. They will not act. They won't give a damn until they have an electoral factor which motivates them. It is us, the youth, the future of India and the future of the world, who must advocate for climate change to become first an electoral issue, and then for it to become an issue that politicians ensure that they have bipartisan support for. We need to change our strategy around climate change messaging. Human beings are selfish, and if talking about the damage to the planet has not worked, we need to start talking about the impact on human beings. 
in 2019 for example india lost 1.67 million people due to air pollution related complications scientists research today shows that the corona virus may have emerged because deforestation has weakened the man animal zoonotic barrier it's allowed these diseases to move from wildlife to humans much more easily if humans don't care about the ill effects of deforestation maybe they will care when they know how it's landed them in a pandemic i am not advocating for an upheaval of the system i am not saying that we should go from 0 to 100 i am just saying that we need to advocate for existing institutions governments corporates academic institutions all kinds of institutions to support and to amplify youth voices to make climate governments more inclusive and for everyone to make piecemeal changes to go from 0 to 100 like a ferrari in 3 seconds is not possible it's not viable and it's not realistic the narrative around climate change needs to shift from being something that people disassociate themselves from to something that people actively engage with climate change is real it's here and it's now we must act now if not to save the planet then in our own selfish interests to save ourselves and generations after us if you are someone who wants to work towards securing a future feel free to reach out to me through social media or email me at abhirbhala@gmail.com that's my time folks i'm abhir and thank you for being a wonderful audience take care and stay safe